Hello and welcome to Up to Speed Live. Today is a very special episode. We are talking about Juneteenth. This is the oldest nationally celebrated commemoration of the ending of slavery in the United States. And we thought it was worthy of some exploration and celebration. But before we get to that, by the way, I'm Diana Alvear. We're gonna hit the weekly highlights of all the things we saw in Up to Speed Live. So Monday, Diego and Nikki broke big news on gaming at E3. All sorts of announcements and exciting stuff happening. Tuesday, we launched Family Money and gave you a 10% discount on your next accessory for getting vaccinated. Wednesday, we let you in on what dads really want on Father's Day. Hint, it's not socks. And yesterday, Hans and pro, golf, pro golfer Tony Finau showed you how to elevate your golf game with AR Pro Interactive App. All right, a chock full of news sort of week. And now let's get back to Juneteenth. Joining me today, I'm so excited. I have so many wonderful guests for you today, is Kayla Garner. She's from our network and technology team. She's a network automation supervisor. But beyond that, she is a fabulous leader in BOLD. Now, BOLD is our ERG that stands for Black Originators, Leaders, and Doers. They're taking the lead with this year's Juneteenth celebrations. There's been a lot of news around Juneteenth, so let's get right to it. Kayla, welcome so much to the show. We're also very pleased to have Wendy Tassetta. She leads our nationwide small business and is channel chief for Verizon Business. She's a rock star. You'll see her all over social media. Great follow. And Shane Sanders, he leads business excellence and cost transformation on our finance team. He's also a member of Bold's Executive Advisory Board, and this is his first up to speed appearance. So we welcome both of you to the show. So let's talk about Juneteenth, starting with the history. So Kayla, can you tell us a little bit about what this holiday is all about for those who may be unfamiliar with it? I want to make sure, yes, everyone knows, like, what is Juneteenth? So in 1863, um, during the American Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, right? We all know that history from grade school. However, what we don't know, and maybe a lot of people don't know, is that when he declared, right, that all enslaved people were to be free, the news did not get down to Texas. And so more than two years later, about two and a half years later, um, General Granger came down to Galveston, Texas, and he issued General Order Number 3, which allowed everyone to know, hey, yes, all Black Americans are free. There are no more enslaved Black Americans. And so um, it wasn't until then, until the Union came down in 1865, um, two years again later, that um, the enslaved people knew that they were free in Texas. And so that's how we celebrate. We say, hey, Juneteenth is a day to celebrate emancipation for us. Juneteenth is our Independence Day. It's our Black Independence Day. So for June 19th, 1865, in commemoration of that, we celebrate. That's wonderful. And I know you have some questions for Shane right now. Yeah, so I'm really <clears throat> curious. You know, I'm really, really excited about this conversation because I get to hear from these amazing Verizon leaders. But Shane, what does Juneteenth mean to you? Like, why is it important? Yeah, well, Kayla, you know, great question. And I guess what I would say, um, when I think about Juneteenth, it's really about, to your point, it's freedom, it's equal rights, and it's really the end of slavery in the United States. And if you think about it, it's really, in my mind, all about freedom. You've heard the term, no one is free until everyone is free. Uh, and I believe that. And it really gives us an opportunity, to be quite honest, to really celebrate all Americans and freedom. Um, not, you know, depending on who you are, what you look like, but all Americans were free and not only free, but created equally. And I use the operative word created, right? So I think that's why it's important. I think the other thing that it reminds us is that it's been a struggle for equality. And that struggle has, you know, passed down through generations and it continues today, but optimistic about where the future, what the future holds. So that's why it's important, uh, at least in my mind. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Yeah, I completely agree that, you know, equality, freedom, all of that. And growing up, you know, as a celebration, this was something um, that my family 
celebrated in San Diego. And I think it's been one of those things that Black families have been able to commemorate and celebrate within our, um, within our little groups and family of friends. Um, and so I'm wondering, Shane and Wendy, how have you celebrated, right? What has that looked like with your families and any other ways that you've observed Juneteenth previously? So I think, Kayla, the celebrations look different over the years. Candidly, and I think we could all acknowledge this, we never heard about it in school. Um, and for my family, it's something we heard about at church. It was a celebration on Sunday at church, and we would talk about how important it is that everyone be part of the story. And the celebration has often been about friendship. It has also been, been about lifting each other up. And it has also been about acknowledging where do we want to go and what is the hope of tomorrow. Um, and I think that's so much of the feeling of what you're seeing in celebrations today, what you've seen over the last 24 hours, has been an acknowledgement that we continue to make progress. And we are certainly not perfect, but that it's a journey that keeps moving forward. Um, and I'm really excited this year to see everyone having these discussions, not only at church, but at work and in school, because it is the totality of our story as a country. And it's important that we tell the whole story so that we can all be included. Thank you. Amazing answer. <laughs> Yeah, and Shane, I want to jump in here because we, as I mentioned at the top of the show, there was very big news yesterday about Juneteenth. President Biden signing a bill into law establishing June 19th as Juneteenth National Independence Day. It is now a U.S. holiday, and in fact, many companies are observing it. Um, I wanted your reaction to that big news, Shane. Wow, Diana. I guess what I would say, I had to reflect, to be quite honest, and as I reflected on it, it really took me back. And it took me back to, you know, not only my parents, but my parents' parents. And what it said to me is that I matter. Um, because I think when you think about the, the whole signing of the bill, typically in any organization or any country, you celebrate the things that you value. And so I look at this as the opportunity to celebrate the things that we value. And the, and the value is really that the Black and the African American experience in this country matters. And it's mattered as a result of, you know, this, this, what I'll call the, the, the celebration of uh, Juneteenth. And so that's what it means. That's what that's what I took away from it. it. It was really a reflective moment for me in the point that we matter. That is so profound. And Wendy, I know we were just talking about the, the big news. Can you give us your reaction? You know, it's been an interesting um, an interesting moment of reflection. I think Shane's word is well chosen because there are there are many moments in our country's history we could choose to memorialize. Um, I think this one is important because it represents who we want to be, a place where no one gets left behind. And as we've gone through the last several years where people disagree on so much, it really creates some space for us to reflect that there was a time when we said people were free, but they weren't. There was a time when we said that we were equal, but we weren't. And I think Shane's comment around our parents and the existence of, of how we got here. If you look at Opal Lee, she's 94 years old. She was born a free woman, but she was not born a woman who could vote. Yeah. And we continue to move forward as a country. And we have to acknowledge that while we aren't where we could be, and we certainly aren't where we should be, we aren't where we were. And I love that this gives us a moment to talk about how do we continue to create a place and a country where everyone is included in our story and everyone is included in the hope of the future. And it's an acknowledgement that we're not there yet. And if we only talk about the moments that were wonderful in our history, we lose the opportunity to reach for more. So I really am excited about the conversations this means we're having in boardrooms and churches and communities and schools, because wouldn't it be great if our children came up in a world 
where everyone is part of what happens tomorrow. Oh, Wendy, and you know, I, I'm so proud of the conversations that I've been having at Verizon about all of these kinds of topics. Speaking of American history, last year in our Next 20 series, David Hubbard and our legal team and public policy team hosted a great conversation with Dr. Khalil Gibran Mohammed. He's a professor of public policy, race, and American history at the Harvard Kennedy School. And Kayla, you hosted, oh my gosh, that conversation that you had with Dr. Clarence Jones, who was a speechwriter and personal friend of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., along with Rima Qureshi, our executive vice president and chief strategy officer. I mean, I saw the emotion on your face and I heard it in your voice. Kayla, tell us what that was like. Wow. Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, that's my grandpa Jones. You know, he's adopted me at this point. We have the same birthday. It all makes sense. Um, but <laughs> I think really for me, looking even looking and reflecting in this moment, it was really emotional because I think it was one of those first conversations from someone who's been doing this work for so long you know, really empowering this next generation, including myself, and really inspiring me. And I think in that moment, because of so many things going on, you know, during the year, I needed that in that moment. And I think a lot of people needed that. And then for our allies, it was such an educational opportunity, right? It was, it was an invitation to learn. It was an invitation to walk hand in hand with the black community for all of these kinds of initiatives and and spread awareness and do the work that's needed. So I I definitely um, am so, that's like one of my career life highlights, you know, <laughs> um, being able to speak with him for sure. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that, that part of that though, it, one of the beautiful things about that conversation that you both shared just goes to highlight the work that you've been doing along with the rest of, of your teammates at Bold. I mean, we have to talk about this. Work on voter registration, participation in the census, a virtual march on Washington last year. By the way, one of our most popular events in the volunteer portal, I participated. I'm getting chills just thinking about it. So Kayla, what do we have planned for Juneteenth? Yes, Juneteenth. So, you know, y'all, we had to bring it to this year, um, especially with this amazing announcement yesterday. Um, but yes, Bold is moving beyond the conversation this year. Yesterday, we talked about financial literacy, so make sure you check out that replay. But today, right after this program, we're going to host our first all-Black women panel, all black women business owners. They're amazing. We've got Michelle Williams from FinTech in Action and Code 214. We've got Nika King. She actually plays the mother from um, Euphoria on HBO and just so uh, amazing, amazing people. Tashara Parker is going to be hosting. And so this panel is really focused on our socioeconomics and what can we do, as Wendy was talking about, to move forward, to look forward, to think more futuristic. And so I'm excited about that. And then Bold Yahoo is actually doing an amazing um, program called The Soul of America at 3 p.m. Eastern. And so you can check out all of that in your email. It was sent out yesterday from Inside Verizon. All of the programs are listed there so you can find the links in RSVP. There's even a couple of external events that we have highlighted there as well. So lots going on, as you can tell, Diana. <laughs> Yeah, and it blows me away how much uh, Bold does. I mean, this is all extra time y'all are putting in because you're passionate about this and you are educating the rest of us on all of this. So our thanks to you for all the hard work you've been doing. And I have a question for Wendy because I know how passionate you are about small business. And I wanted to know what is your team doing to champion small businesses, especially the black owned businesses? Oh, this is like my favorite topic. Okay. Um, you know, I'm so proud of Verizon and the work we've done over the last year. Um, I think a lot of companies have said that they want to bring communities along. I think we have put our money and our wallet and our, our leadership behind our message. Um, so whether it was the work that we did with small business concerts, whether it was the donations that we've made into communities, um, and whether it is the incredible work that is led by Rose Kirk and our foundation, we are helping businesses figure out how to survive and thrive right now, because it's different. Coming out of COVID means it's not the same old world we had. You have to be virtual. You have to have an agile solution. 
you have to be able to deliver a stellar customer experience because people only want to leave their homes if it's going to be worth it. So you've got to level up that experience. And then I think the fact that security should be top of mind for everyone. You know, if, if companies the size of the, the gas companies can have ransomware attacks, we know that any business can. So it's great if you are an expert hairdresser, that is wonderful. You don't need to be an expert on technology. We are doing workshops every Friday. We do Small Business Friday in our stores. We have stores in 7,600 locations across the country. Wherever your community is, we are. Come into our locations and let us evaluate your tech. Let us show you what you don't know. And let us show you how easy it is to upgrade your experience. You know, I like to think about it like this. Let your small business feel big, and we can help you do that. So Rose is doing some incredible work around how do we ignite business owners? How do we teach them financial literacy? How do we teach them about how you need to have a website? Because here's one of the stats that we sh every, every small business owner should know. 85% of people say if they call a small business and they don't answer, they'll never call you back. So being connected wherever you are is the most vital thing you can do as a small business owner. And that means you need a reliable network and we are delivering that whether you are in the Bronx or whether you are in California or whether you are in rural America, we have the network and the distribution that is here to support you. And I would, I would be remiss not to make a plug for our, our teammates and consumer. We are in your communities, we live in your communities and we care about you and your businesses. We can help this country come back faster we can help small businesses come back faster. Just give us a chance to help you. And we are here, we are here, our doors are open, come visit us. I love that commitment at the ground level, you know, because that's where the, the real change happens, person to person, realizing that there truly is that, that deep-seated commitment to helping these small businesses grow. I love that, Wendy, thank you so much. Jane, I'm gonna to turn to you. Following the C-band auction, the Treasury team spoke of how they ensured how DEI firms were able to participate in that capital raise. That was a big deal. And I was happy to see that it hit the headlines because that's a big commitment there. So can you tell me what the finance team is doing internally to cultivate that next generation of diverse leaders? Absolutely, Diana. And I'm, at, I'm really excited, to be quite honest, to talk a little bit about what we are doing in finance. And uh, I think, and I want to just commend the leadership team uh, within finance for opening kind of their minds and hearts to, uh, to, to really kind of championing the issue around this. We've had great support uh, around it. I'm optimistic in terms of what we're doing. Uh, so we've continued a lot in terms of, you know, some of the uh, the courageous conversations with, amongst the different groups. Uh, we continue to have more purposeful conversations in terms of talent. Uh, we, uh, Matt has really challenged the, the organization around uh, talent and having more purposeful conversations. And then we've also established some initiatives around diversity that are being led by some of the black directors within finance, uh, which I think will be uh, as we move into this, we'll yield, you know, a lot of results as we move forward. So I'm excited about it. Um, the grassroots is where it really starts. And really there are three things that we've talked about in terms of what we think will make uh, really a difference. And it's really around how do we think about finance leadership oversight? So you, you only, you have to measure what you expect, right? And so I think that's critical. Uh, we're in process of putting some things uh, in place. Uh, we've talked a lot about sponsorship and mentorship. So sponsorship is much different than mentorship. So the ability to, to willing to take uh, someone under your wings and sponsor them as we get into these conversations, as we provide uh, real opportunities for individuals, I think is really important. And so making the distinction there between sponsorship and mentorship uh, will will actually be critical. And then how do we really, we call it intervention. Um, what interventions do we need to make uh, in terms of leveraging a lot of the, 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 the tools that we have as an organization? Uh, I think it's important. How do we leverage those? How do we make the connections across the different uh, organizations and with even some of the 
the reach out to, for instance, HBCUs. So uh, I'm excited. I think the team is excited. Uh, a lot to do, by the way. Uh, we're by no means uh, uh, where we want to be. And I think that's really been the challenge for us is how do we maintain the momentum uh, not only within the organization, but within finance to continue uh, to focus on building really black, diverse talent uh, within finance. And as you know, with finance folks, we're all about the numbers. So uh, part, of the, part of the exercise was really looking at the data and looking at where we are so that we can measure kind of our progress uh, toward the future. So optimistic, excited, but a lot of work left to do. Thank you. And I, I would like to ask one last question uh, that I think I love to end shows on a call to action, really letting people know what they can do. So in addition to everything that Bold is doing and all of these different activities, I want all three of you very briefly to tell me how people can be better allies. And I'm going to start with you, Shane. Wow. I would say, you know, in order to really be a better ally, I think it's really just part of it's just listening and making yourself available and vulnerable, because I think that is really a way to increase allyship and not being afraid. Uh, so sometimes you have to take the risk. Uh, and if you never take the risk, I'm not sure how allyship even works. So I think that's really important as we think about allyship, as you think about mentorship, as you think about sponsorship. Uh, it's really um, taking the risk and opening yourself up and listening is really critical, I think, for you know making progress. Thank you, Shane. How about you, Kayla? Yeah, that's a great question. I think what I think about when I, you know, think talking to my my colleagues about allyship is I feel like they think it's like this big undertaking, right? And they've got to read 15 books in a month and and get educated on all these things. And it really isn't that. It really is one step at a time every day, taking a, a self check-in, right? With all of the things that you do and you say in your own community at your own dinner table, right? What are those conversations? What do those things look like when you're teaching your kids about what anti-racism is? And really becoming an ally and an abolitionist is then deciding after you've done some education for yourself and your family and, and within your little circle of community is you go out and you go and hang out with people that don't look like you and get involved in the things that are really in the community that make a difference, right? Um, I think that's really what I would say for if there was a call to action, it's like, look at your family, look at yourself, and then go out hand in hand with other people, again, that don't look like you, the Black community, the Asian American community, and really get to work. I love that. And Wendy, of course, we'll end with you. So your brief thoughts on how to be a better ally. Um, I think a few things. Um, probably the most important to me is that allyship is active. You cannot be an ally who calls later and says, I can't believe that happened. That is not allyship. It is what you do in that moment. And despite your fears, it is letting someone know that I see you and I am, I'm speaking and standing up with you. I think the second piece is, it is about the education. And people think they have to run the whole marathon in one day. There's lots of people who heard about Juneteenth and went, I don't know about this, but I'm afraid to say I don't know about it. Welcome to Google. It's okay. Go out there and do some research. Go and visit the National Museum of, Af Museum of African American Studies online. Take a tour. Just learn a little bit more than you knew yesterday. And then I have a note that sits on my desk that says, I want to live a challenged life. And my advice to you is a little bit of what Kayla and Shane have said. Get into rooms where the conversation is different than the one you've been having for the last three years. Whether that means that the people look different, whether that means they have different experiences, or whether that means that they are people you would never have met before. Just get into some new conversations and open your viewpoint. And I think you'll find that we have more in common than not. And the only way, and I hope what everybody takes out of Juneteenth is that there is a tomorrow that is better than yesterday. 
and it is part it includes all of us and if we can all just come to the table together i think we'll we'll like what we see oh i love that definitely more listening more action and more yeah. just togetherness. I think that, that that's just a beautiful way to end this Juneteenth celebration. I can't thank all of you enough, Kayla, Wendy, and Shane, for opening your hearts and walking us through this special day. And just a few other news items we'd like to mention because it's related. So Momentum Movement is really moving. Gina Wilborn led an awesome discussion with four Momentum Movement team members on what diversity data in GNNT showed why the team is committed to driving progress and what we're actually doing. So let's take a look at the clip. Why does this work that we're doing in this time and day and the things that's going on in this society, why does it matter? And what are we trying to accomplish? And Tim, I'll start with you, just your personal perspective. It matters because it's the right time and the right place. And everyone deserves the opportunity to work at a company like Verizon. Everybody deserves the same opportunities that have been given to all of us to work at such a great company that gives you opportunities to do basically whatever you want to do, almost wherever you want to go, because we're not just domestic, we're global as well. So it's, it's that which really is, makes me passionate about this, this project, is fighting for everybody to have all the same opportunities that have given me a remarkable career for 28 years and going at Verizon. I like that, fighting for it. That's 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 a great term to use. Isn't that great? Equality and opportunity. Gina and team, thank you so much for your sentiments. I want to thank all of my panelists today for a wonderful conversation about Juneteenth. You've heard all the different things that you can do. You can uh, watch that replay of the conversation Gina had uh, by clicking today's link in today's story. A very happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. We see you. We love you. We appreciate you. We hope you're able to relax. And a reminder that you can tune in to both celebrating Juneteenth event right after Up to Speed. So I'm Diana Alvear. Thank you so much for spending a little time with us to talk about the importance of Juneteenth. We hope you walk away educated, informed, and inspired. Until next time, you're up to speed.